Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gary LaPointe, and along with my co-director, Julie Niederhoff, we'd like to welcome you to the 74th Annual Salzburg Award and Memorial Lecture Program. We especially like to welcome our distinguished guests and Salzburg recipients to our beautiful campus. So the Salzburg Award is the first and it's the oldest supply chain award in the country. And the Salzburg Award recognizes significant contributions to the fields of transportation, logistics, and, and supply chain. And we have academic contributors, we have practitioner contributors. Uh, we'll both recognize both today. So this year we have two recipients that are more than deserving of the Salzburg Award. And we're gonna get to those pretty shortly. They highlight a terrific program. We've got planned for you this afternoon. Uh, to get the program started, I'd first like to invite Alex McKelvey, our interim dean, up uh, for introduction and some welcoming remarks. Thank you very much, Gary. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Vice Chancellor Haney, esteemed guests, colleagues, students, uh, friends. Welcome to the 74th annual Harry E. Salzburg Memorial Lecture Program. I, I like that number 74 as well. I didn't say that, 74 in a row. That's extremely impressive. As Gary mentioned, my name's Alex McKelvey. I'm the interim dean here at the Whitman School, and we truly are delighted to have you with us today. So before we get started, I would like to acknowledge with respect the Onondaga Nation, fire keepers of the Haudenosaunee, the indigenous people on whose, indigenous peoples on, on whose ancestral land Syracuse University now stands. Now, the Salzburg program is, is a special event for the Whitman School, for Syracuse University, and in particular, our supply chain management program. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, first, it helps to celebrate the excellence of our nationally ranked supply chain management program. As Gary mentioned, and many of you already know, the Whitman School has the oldest supply chain program in the country, started in 1919, so certainly before it was a, um, a topic that was familiar for everyone that we saw during the pandemic. And this particular event is the crown jewel of this program. Um, our faculty in our supply chain program consist of leaders in their fields, journal editors, brilliant thinkers, inspiring teachers, and influencers in the media. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is this event showcases industry leaders, our talented students, and our excellent scholars. It, rank, it recognizes innovators and those who are demonstrating excellence in industry and scholarship. So innovation and excellence are values that we want to instill in our students. And your leadership in this area truly helps to inspire them towards those ends. Um, the event also reflects many of the most important things a globally recognized academic program is expected to do, to be very honest. The types of things that we wanna have with our best programs, bring together research, teaching, and best practice from industry. It's those three together that truly make a program excellent. So the list of awardees, the type of program we have on today and tomorrow is extremely impressive. And we're thankful for all of your unique contributions to that program and what the, the guests are able to bring to Syracuse. So that's number two. So I said there's a couple. Number three. This program, this year's program in particular is especially relevant as it melds a few vitally important areas. It reflects what we've experienced in the last few years, obviously challenges in supply chain with been seemingly endless disruptions and changes. Now these changes, these disruptions have brought uncertainty and where war, conflict, trade policies, pandemics have certainly reminded all of us on a daily basis about the chaotic nature and fragility of supply chains. But this program also reflects technological innovations and the opportunity for artificial intelligence, machine learning, and other tools have taught us about automation, efficiency, and access in supply chain. And it further reflects the undoubtedly important role of sustainability and green issues in business practices, including the products we use, ESG initiatives, and extensive global partnerships to make sure we have the reach into hard places. Now it's this important intersection of these three areas, sustainability, technology, and supply chain that has a deep impact on our communities. It affects their everyday lives, things that we take for granted when they don't happen. So you greatly appreciate when they do happen. And these are the types of things 
these areas that are going to have a transformational role on our, on our decision making and priorities moving forward when we think about what we source, what we produce, what we sell, and what we dispose of that and is going to be pervasive for the generations to come. So not just for our group of students and our group of future leaders, but for the rest of the world in the future. And as global citizens, these are critical era areas and issues that we have to become aware of and ideally have deep insights on. And for this latter reason, this third of the three, I think this Salzburg program this year is extraordinarily timely, pertinent, and relevant. Um, and I can't really think of many more things that are more important right now for our future, for where we want to go, than the intersection of sustainability, emerging technology, and supply chain. That is really the apex of what we're all trying to do. So before we get started with the program, many thanks to the organizing team, notably uh, Professor Julie Niederhoff, Gary LaPointe, the, Fr the Franklin Supply Chain Management Advisory Board, all the faculty, all the staff for putting on this amazing event. So my job here is, this afternoon is actually really easy. Uh, I get to come in and say nice things about my colleagues. I get to welcome you. And then my last thing is I get to introduce your next speaker. And that it's my distinct honor to introduce Syracuse University's Vice Chancellor and the Executive Dean of the Whitman School of Management, Mike Haney. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Alex. I'm not going to be quite as long as Alex. I, I will be brief. But, you know, first, I want to add my welcome on behalf of Chancellor Severud to our guests, our, our award recipients, our, our students back in the back. Students are always back in the back. Um, our students for being here today. I'm, I'm thrilled that you all made the choice to be here. And it, and it is a choice. Sometimes showing up is just half of it. So I appreciate you showing up. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't add also my thanks to the, the Franklin Supply Chain uh, Management Advisory Board team, the, the team at Whitman who organized this event. Uh, um, thank you for, for making today, I think, uh, a day that will be very special in the, the context of the long and storied history of this program. Um, for my part, I want to begin with a little bit of history. Um, the, the Salzburg Medallion that will be presented today was created first in 1952, and, and the, the, the medallion was designed by a world-renowned Syracuse University artist named Ivan Mistrovic. Um, five years prior to the first Salzburg medallion being awarded, then Syracuse University Chancellor William Pearson Tully brought the great Croatian sculptor to Syracuse as an artist in residence and also a professor of sculpture here at Syracuse University. And in turn, Ivan launched the sculpture program at the university and continued to be a prolific designer of small scale work, such as the iconic medallion that's gonna be presented here today. And over the decades, that, that medallion, that Salzburg medallion has become recognized as one of the most prestigious awards in the field of transportation and supply chain management. And, and as Alex had mentioned, um, I think issues of uh, based in supply chain management and transportation really have assumed a heightened prominence in, in our post-COVID world. And, and for this reason, I'm both proud, extraordinarily proud of the university's history in this space, but I'm also, and maybe more so excited for the future role that Syracuse University and the Whitman School of Management can assume as, as thought leaders in this critical field of, of both research and practice. And, there is probably no better example of that opportunity than to consider what's ahead for both this university and for Central New York as this region plans to become home to what will be the largest semiconductor fabrication facility in the Northern Hemisphere. Micron's $100 billion investment will play out just a few miles from where we are all sitting in this auditorium. This project will break ground um, early next year, and it will bring generational change to this community, an investment that um, will likely produce close to 50,000 new jobs in central New York and, and spur more than $500 million in community investment and workforce development initiatives. And, and importantly, that the ROI on that investment will depend, I think, in very fundamental ways on the development and the deployment of 
a new and innovative supply chain infrastructure to support domestic semiconductor manufacturing. And, and I'm thrilled for our school and even more so for the, for the ones in the back, our students, um, who will have more than just a front row seat um, when this vision comes to life. Instead, they're going to be in the arena. Um, and, and this is precisely the type of opportunity, um, the experiential opportunity that we've long championed on behalf of our students at, at Syracuse and specifically at the Whitman School. And, and certainly the, the Salzburg Award winners um, that we're gonna recognize here today you know, both practitioners and researchers, they have also been in the arena, in the arena every day, delivering innovation and expert problem solving and, you know, aggregated over what really is a, a remarkable career of, a, of distinguished accomplish, accomplishment. So, you know, for our students, tomorrow's leaders in this industry, this program really does set the conditions for one generation of supply chain leaders to empower and inspire the next generation. So um, all of us, me included, certainly we are um, inspired and grateful for the work of, of all those that, that we honor today. And again, I just wanna say thank you everyone for, for joining us. And I, I do hope you enjoy and, and, and take um, some insights away from today's program. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dean McKelvey, and thanks, Vice Chancellor uh, Haney. Just to build on what we just heard about our famous sculpture, it truly is a beautiful sculpture, and the, the original is actually in the archives here at the university. But you can also see some of his very famous sculptures scattered around the university campus, and um, there's several on the university quad, uh, so we can take a look at that. I'm also reminded before we get started, if you happen to park in the parking garage, they've noticed by us that the parking garage is gonna be closing early this afternoon, probably around 5.30. So if you parked in there um, and you're attending the reception, you may wanna move your car before you come up to the reception so you don't get locked in, just so you're aware. <laughs> okay, so um, in, to get things going, uh, get the program going, um, in addition to recognizing our Salzburg recipients, we use this opportunity also to recognize some of our outstanding supply chain students. Um, this is one of the more rewarding aspects of um, the we get to do as academics. And so we're going to begin by recognizing two of our outstanding supply chain students this afternoon. The first recognition is the Walter K. Zinsmeister Award. And that award acknowledges outstanding, uh, out, our outstanding supply chain student. And every year, this becomes more and more difficult because the students get just some better and better. And it's very difficult to separate one from another. Um, this recognition goes further than just having a superior academic performance. It includes internships, involvements in organizations, activities, leadership, uh, a passion for the supply chain field as well. So this year, our Zinsmeister recipient has a near perfect grade, uh, grade point average. Our winner is a double major in supply chain and business analytics with a minor in economics. Uh, he's a member of the of Beta Gamma Sigma, a business honor society that recognizes uh, top academic achievers. He's had uh, three very good internships in supply chain with Toyota, uh, Hino Motors, Hino Trucks, and Neotech, um, all in Taiwan. He's active in the supply chain club. And I'm very pleased to present this year's Zinsmeister Award to Jason Lay. And that award uh, comes with a very nice honorarium as well. So um, this year we have a new award and I'd like to invite my co-director Julie Niederhoff to describe and present this next recognition. Thank you, Gary. Um, I'm here to present the Empowering Women in Supply Chain Award on behalf of the Didier family. 
Uh, this award was created by a Whitman Supply Chain graduate, Jory Didier, now Fox. Uh, she describes herself as a passionate supply chain nerd that felt um, that continued support for women in underrepresented career paths is still needed. She entered her career at a time when women were not very prominent in supply chain roles, and oftentimes that is still the case. She started this award to support other women who are passionate about supply chain. So uh, that is why it is my pleasure to announce this year's winner, Carolyn Kehoe. Uh, Carolyn shows great promise in the realm of supply chain. Her academic achievements combined with her extracurricular activities demonstrate her commitment to her education as well as to the community at large. She's a leader in Enactus, a peer mentor, as well as an active member in both her sorority and Phi Eta Sigma Honor Society. Her internship at New York Presbyterian Hospital is where she really began to hone her supply chain skills and understand what she can accomplish in her career. After graduating in the spring, Caroline will join New York Presbyterian as a full-time employee. So please join me in welcoming and congratulating Caroline Kehoe on her achievement. Carolyn. So congratulations to both of our student recipients. So we're going to get our um, program into uh, full gear here with a presentation of the Salzburg medallions. Um, our first recipient is going to be Professor Marshall Fisher. Professor Fisher is one of the most preeminent academics in the field of supply chain. He's published many, many seminal papers and has set the framework for supply chain strategy. His papers are required reading in probably every supply chain program in the country, including my own supply chain strategy class. My students have to read his papers. Um, he's most deserving of this prestigious award. I'd like to invite um, Vishal Gar to come up and introduce Professor Fisher. Vishal is the Dean of the Graduate School of Management at the Johnson College of Business at Cornell University, and he did his doctoral work under the advisement of Professor Fisher. Dean Gar. Thank you, Gary, and uh, good afternoon uh, to Vice Chancellor Haney, Dean McKelvey, awardees, distinguished guests, um, and, and students, and, and colleagues. Uh, it is my honor to introduce Professor Marshall Fisher, who is the UPS professor and professor of operations and information management and co-director of the Fishman uh, Davidson Center for Service and Operations Management at the Wharton School University of Pennsylvania, where he has been a faculty member since 1975. Uh, Professor Fisher holds an SB degree in electrical engineering and an MBA and a PhD in operations research, all from MIT. Um, he is credited with a number of important achievements in our or advancements in our profession, as Gary just mentioned, um, in manufacturing, uh, distribution logistics, supply chain management, uh, especially for hard to predict fashion products, and rocket science retailing, on which he has developed many methods, written influential articles, and co-authored a book called The New Science of Retailing. Uh, Professor Fisher's contributions include the design and performance analysis of algorithms, development of Lagrangian relaxation as a versatile optimization tool, the concept of reactive capacity in fashion supply chains, and optimization of workforce staffing, pricing, inventories, et cetera, in retail supply chains. Um, his work uh, brings together strategic C-suite topics, such as product lifecycle, uh, variety, supply chain design, growth, and bankruptcy, with the discovery and implementation of advanced scientific tools for operational decision-making on the ground. Um, an example of his contribution includes his early work on truck fleet optimization, which resulted in a successful entrepreneurial venture. Um, then another example is the concept of reactive capacity, 
uh, which he elucidated in the famous case study called Sport Obermeyer and further developed through many papers. Um, his work on assortment optimization and product lifecycle planning with numerous retailers and through another entrepreneurial venture uh, called 4R Systems. And then most recently, his work on retail staffing and um, uh, to, to, to add to what uh, Dean McKelvey was saying earlier, use of technologies such as online training of workers, dynamic pricing, social media data, et cetera, uh, particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I have personally witnessed uh, Professor Fisher's fan following among uh, C-level executives with whom he engages to grow the impact of the operations management profession and popularize scientific principles uh, for both strategic and operational problems. Uh, and in this way, he, has, he, he guides our field uh, through the choice of research topics, methods, and relevance, um, and, and his calling for a healthy injection of empirics uh, to which many of us have responded enthusiastically. Um, Professor Fisher has been recognized by numerous awards in our field in both theory and practice, uh, including the Lanchester Prize, the Edelman Prize, and many others. Um, he is a member of the National Academy of Engineering and a fellow of uh, INFORM's MSOM and POMS societies. I will conclude this introduction with uh, Professor Fisher's calling in his article uh, called Strengthening the Empirical Base of Operations Management, where he says, like all healthy fields, we should constantly strive for improvement. And, uh, and that's a spirit that, that I hope you can take as you uh, read and, 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 and implement ideas from his work. Um, so uh, thank you very much. And, uh, and please join me in welcoming uh, uh, Professor Marshall Fisher for the Salzburg Academic Medallion Award. So with that fine introduction, I'd like to invite Dean McKelvey and Vice Chancellor Haney to come up for the presentation and the reading of the citation. Um, I don't know, maybe Vice Chancellor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Professor Fisher, you can come up. You stand right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More nice things about you. <laughs> uh, this is the Chancellor's citation. Dr. Marshall Fisher is recognized with the Salzburg Medallion in honor of visionary leadership in supply chain management. Dr. Fisher has distinguished himself with preeminent academic contributions to the field. Dr. Fisher's leadership and scholarship have enabled leaders globally to better navigate supply chain disruptions and changes while also leading to remarkable improvements in product availability, cost control, and customer satisfaction. Um, and this is signed by Kent Severud, Chancellor and President, uh, Syracuse University. Thank you. So our next recipient represents the practitioner side of supply chain and is, uh, is equally deserving of the Salzburg Award. Um, for many years, I managed the Singapore Summer Internship Program for SU Abroad, and I spent a considerable amount of time living and working in Southeast Asia. And while I was there, I'd take the opportunity when I could to travel throughout the, the region. And some of my travels took me to some really remote corners of the world. And um, there's two things that I realized were constant. Don't ever drink the water anywhere where you go in that part of the world. And in place of water, you can always find a Coke. Um, and that became a staple of, of what I had to drink. So it didn't matter where I was. Um, I literally could be halfway up a mountain, climbing up to a monastery uh, at 10,000 feet. And there'd be a little, a little tiny hiker's hut there. And in there, you could actually buy a Coke. It's actually unbelievable that the distribution channels that Coke has developed through their, their partnerships. So um, Coke is probably 
one of the top three recognizable brands in the world. Uh, Michael Kulikowski is the Vice President of Global Supply Chain Services, is, re is representing the Coca-Cola company today and accepting the Salzburg Award. Mike, can you please come up and I'll read the citation. Coca-Cola is recognized with the Salzburg Medallion in honor of its visionary leadership in supply chain management. Coca-Cola's world-class distribution network is enabled by transparency and collaboration with supply chain partners. Coca-Cola has become a champion of the environment, animals, and people by establishing sustainable practices throughout its value chain and investing in the communities in which it sources its materials. Coca-Cola's efforts in this field has set a gold standard in supply chain partner collaboration, environmental protection, and community improvement. And this is signed by Kent Severu, Chancellor and President, Syracuse University. Thank you.